Welcome to another episode of Pear Tree Ranching in our Problem Horse series. So we've got Cisco. Cisco's here because he was rearing and flipping over. So we're a few sessions in. You got to see session one and two. And his owner came and got to see session three. And then he's had the weekend off. So we are back to it. So we'll fill you in on what we did uh, in that session, that what the owner got to see, and where we go from here. So follow along. We are saddled up. Okay, we are saddled up. All we did is lead over here. Uh, I brushed him up, saddled up, and he's been great for that. So easy peasy, stood nice and still, nice and quiet. So we're gonna get started. I've got Kathy is here. She's gonna help sling the camera. That'll give you guys a little better view. What we're gonna start with is going through the things you've seen. So head down under duress or perceived duress with the flag, shushing around sideways. Uh, with our head down and relaxed, then we're going to progress to walk track canter on a circle, relaxed, on a 12-foot rope. The reason it's 12 foot is they have to yield. You give them a longer rope, that's fine. You might use that in process, but product, I want them to be able to fit in that smaller rope. It proves that they're yielding. Okay, it challenges their confidence and commitment to staying off of the rope and not trying to run away from the stick. And then we'll have backing, relax with the head down, and then last but not least, what I call horse burpees. So we're gonna show you that. And that'll kind of finish up the list. We'll see where we are, but I was able to do that whole list for the owner um, end of last week. She was able to see that and was real happy. And so now we're gonna do that list with the saddle on. If we can do that, we might start looking at sitting on them some, but I also wanna start getting into pushing some buttons a little bit more. It's a hard balance. Don't make them rear and do that silly stuff, but you do gotta push on them enough that they can learn other things to do when they feel like they wanna do that. And there's just a dangerous factor there that we gotta play with our safety uh, as a high, 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 probably the highest priority. And his too, okay? All right, we're gonna get started. What I want to point out right here, notice he is putting his nose down, but he is not relaxing. Tucking the chin and pulling it back towards his chest, but he is not relaxing it all the way. So we need to make sure if we're going to work on this as a technique and a skill for our horse to learn, that we need to wait for him to relax all the way. See the head starting to come lower? I don't have to do more pressure because he's not being resistant. He's just not being committed. A big change from what we've been doing till now is now that saddle's on them. It can make them feel squeezed. It can make them feel trapped. It can make them feel worried. It can make them feel claustrophobic. So it can make it harder for him to commit to this. He's also had two days off over the weekend. So it can be that he just needs a little bit of warm up. And he's not being bad. We just have to be patient. But it's important to notice the difference and be able to... Uh, Pay attention to that and hang in there. You stay committed as the horseman for that horse to get committed to the idea. I want relax all the way. I don't want that chin to his chest. I want him to relax his head forward and down. There is a difference with the nose. The angle is more forward and down towards the lead rope.
There's a big commitment and then a lick and chew. Big deep breath. If I'm going to sit around a lot longer with him getting like this, I might do a little bit of sideways and come back to it. Hey guys, quick pull you away from your scheduled programming of our Problem Horse series. If you want more full length training, step by step, all the inside stuff. That's not on YouTube. That's on Patreon. You can go over and check out patreon.com slash Paratree Ranch. Get signed up there. There's a couple of different tier levels. And we're also starting to do giveaways there where you get in. I give a, month, a challenge. You do the challenge. Upload your video. All that information is on Patreon. How to do that. How to get entered to win. we got some great prizes there. And that gives you not only the support you need to achieve your goals, but the motivation and the goals that you can pick and choose through those challenges to participate and play along. So let us help you go check out patreon.com slash pear tree ranch. Now back to your regular scheduled programming. So you can see He's gotten really comfortable with this sideways with the head now. This was, we just started. Took his nose right forward, down and relaxed and slid himself along the fence. It's gonna be really important part for me, my training program to make sure horses learn to really lead with their nose, stretch, relax. This helps them stretch over the top line, lift their back, and suck their bellies up. It also starts to compress them where they can bring the hind leg towards the front leg. This can be good for your muscling as well as your stretching and relaxing. And just let him sit for a second or more. Watch him. He's blinking. His head has stayed down. He hasn't really had to get bothered here. There he kind of starts to look and connect. I take that as a question when they want to look at me like that, give me those eyes and ears. And I take that look as them kind of saying, how is that, how am I doing? They're checking in. There's that kind of question, he's looking. I kind of count it down. I'd go three, two, one. Okay, let's go the other way. Not timing just gives a preparation in my own body and mind so we don't hurry up and go do something else having a little countdown we set him up he sees the opening immediately leads with the nose stretches and relaxes now this angle that we've got i don't mind now if you have a confidence issue with their hip being close get a longer rope Give them more room where they can move away and you don't have to feel like you're in the kick zone here. Okay. If I was worried about this, I'm going to do it slow because I don't want to startle them. I could start chewing them with that and push them away with the rope. I could do the same thing with the flag. Or if they get there, if I just stop and hold the rope, it turns their nose into the fence and gets them to slow down, stop and back up there. Get that hip away from it. So again, the stick pushes the nose, neck, and the shoulder. Gets it to go. Now the rope takes control and the hip steps away. Very good. We're just ticking through our list. So now I'm going to go out in the middle. We're going to do a little walk track canter. I don't know if he's going to bronc with the saddle or not. We'll find out. So far, he's not showing me anything that. Leads me to think he's going to grab himself with that cinch, or cinches, plural. But I do my best to not ever be surprised.
I think it's really important to kind of know how easy and simple that is for them. And a lot of times when we're doing problem horses or naughty horses, horses learn a behavior we don't want them to know. It's very easy for people to get very judgmental and blamey. And so uh, it's important that you don't hear me go, well, so-and-so probably screwed this up or they screwed that up or they talked. It's not helpful for anybody to kind of have that blame game. And so it's really important to me to go, hey, look, this horse knows some really nice things. If you didn't see that in the videos that Ryan did of the evaluation, it's clear the horse has some good things in there. He's just got a spot that we don't want to find, but is in there where he feels trapped and doesn't feel like he has any other out. So he goes to a really negative one. And again, the horse has been vetted and looked over. So it's not necessarily a medical thing that anyone can tell. It's more a mental and emotional thing. So doing these things, taking this time to come away from the center, talk to you guys before I go back to go the other direction. He's now licking and chewing behind me. It's important to then take the pressure off. It's very easy as a trainer, a trainer to have X amount of time, I got to get a horse and I got to go, 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 go and get them done in the next one. And I got too many horses and I don't get to ride mine and I got to mow the grass and I got to get, I got to get, I got to get. Oh, it's not a healthy thing to get sucked down that rabbit hole. And then we kind of get rushing. We got to make sure we take that time, have the time like this for these horses to really saddle and feel comfort with us, around us. And when doing the things we ask them to do um, and or set them up to choose to do. That's really a big part. If I can get him set up and choose to do my ideas, more than likely, he's not going to choose to do the other things because they make him feel good. That's the goal. All right, let's go the other way. Next, I want to work on what I call horse burpees. You can do push-ups, sit-ups, jumping jacks, mountain climbers, and squats, or you could do one burpee, and it would have all those exercises included. So, for me, the reason I call this a burpee is we're getting stand still, forwards, backwards, right, left, up, down, and stand still, all in one movement with the nose, neck, shoulder, ribs, and hips. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you how I build up to this. First, we're gonna put the rope behind the butt. He can do that. Then I would put it behind the saddle and then I'm gonna put it behind the horn. And each stage when it moves up, it gets progressively tighter angle here against the neck. And that can make them feel very wadded up. And is it a big part when you see these horses that wanna go up in the air with the front end that they don't know how to take their shoulders and go, and step out, and now they can make this tight angle bend and get their chin close by their shoulder and still have room to reach with that shoulder. So really crucial thing to build up. This is one of those moves for me that if I could only pick one groundwork move, it would probably be this because it can get all the body parts flowing together and turning and going and causing a horse to have to figure out how to get competent with a tight space. So we're going to start first. So over the head. Okay. And then on your confidence, you can hold this to keep them from turning. Okay. There's behind the cannel. Drop this off behind the hip.
I'm going to get in position where you can see me. I'm going to just hold and freeze here. Now, he's doing a healthy behavior with that bending. So I'm going to cluck. And that cluck helps him to know it's okay to move. I want him to be good at bending and standing still. So he's got a really healthy behavior there. And I want him to know when I say it's okay to move that he can just move and not feel rushed. So that's a great, great start. So if that's working well, I'm going to go behind the candle. I like when I can add the gas pedal and have the horse accept that. It's important to note that little bit of stuck could be related to a little bit of freeze. He knows behavior, but he's frozen if he gets scared or feels too much pressure. And from there, they go up in the air. If you look at this saddle, that's a different stirrup than this stirrup. That one has a block this one doesn't there's a reason folks it's because while doing teaching this i had a horse we did 20 times behind the butt 20 times behind the saddle and the first time behind the horn a little bit of feel she felt claustrophobic went straight up in the air and down on the stirrup smashed him okay i had done all that prep work she still felt trapped there and so and the wasn't pulled around and the snap just barely started to move. She went, oh no, okay. So this is a great way to help build a horse up. We try to make sure they're doing that soft and relaxed and we got to do our best to read the situation. And are they frozen in fear or do they need to just be told it's okay to go? They're trying to be good and think we want them to stand still. So now, same thing here. Notice we're getting backing. The reason he's backing is that angle, instead of being way out to the side where that snap is telling him to turn, it gets much tighter to the chest and neck. So there's not as much right and left. There's a lot more backwards feeling, which this is where our hands go, is right in front of that saddle horn. So this is why this is a great move to get really good. And I'm just letting that slide through my fingers now i'm holding now i might sit down and lift up so it puts a little more pressure that way it's progressive but slow instead of just trying to jerk him around there i'm not trying to make him turn i want him to feel that turning is an easy option So I've already done this without the saddle on and I did it over the withers and he was pretty quick to kind of get that put together. It still has ways to go and you can see here the saddle can add some leverage where you could really just pull on it. If it's over their withers, you can't just pull harder. There he goes. We never really let that get taught. So I'd stand around a lot longer after a nice one like that so he knows that's how I want him to act. These horse burpees is a great way to get your horse bending, relaxing, and getting confident with this claustrophobic feeling that can happen when we get a hold of the reins. This is a great prep on the ground for that. We're going to do a few more. We'll do the other side, and then we'll do the last thing. We'll do some backing, relax with the head down. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take a hold of this nose piece. I've got this halter knot in my hand, but I've just got my knuckles here. So if the horse pulls, I can get my hand free. You don't want to get overcommitted, and your hand can get trapped if they pull back against their face. You get your arm jerked. That's owie. So you want to just hold gentle. I'm going to take my knuckles here and push into the nose. 
The horse, see, he can tuck his chin and start finding his way back. Now, I want that to be a little lighter, but I don't mind. He's not being resistant at all. He's just not so sure. And so I got to be mindful about how I increase the pressure to not make him feel offended because he's not being disobedient. He's just a little stuck. But it's because his brain has to work first. So his brain is working. That means his feet aren't. A lot of times when their feet are working, the brain's not working so much. Okay, so we got to be mindful of those things that these introverted horses need that time to move. And if we're not careful about how we break them loose, it can be an explosion. So I like that I can have my arms relaxed, okay, and just kind of step into him, push him back with his head down. This is going to get a lot lighter. We'll keep working on this, but this is working, okay? This is working. The reason I like it here is I can push with a straight arm versus if I go here, you end up pulling them backwards. Okay? You don't want to pull them backwards. You're better off setting your hands and having them find their way off of that line. See, now he stepped clear, and I'm, I'm way back here. So I can step up. Crowd him, set my hand, and he can step back into open space, find comfort, and that's what we're looking for. That's how we know I didn't force him. He just stepped off, found that comfort there, and relaxed. So we've gone through that bare minimum list. Stand still with your head down and relaxed. Even under perceived duress, we did things like shush the flag around, right? Creates a little worry. The head goes up. Then he goes, oh, yeah, I know what to do. The halter helped us. He finds a way to put his head down. We did sideways, which is how we started our forwards, relaxed with our head down along the fence. We did walk track canter, relaxed on a 12-foot line. Then we did our horse burpees, so over the withers or behind the saddle horn is the end goal. And then we did backing with our head down and relaxed. From here, we can say, well, cool, I'm confident. I keep checking this cinch and I might try to climb on this horse. Or we go to the and then list, which would be tying the head around. That's a big one we're gonna do and I'll show you that. And then I got the obstacle course out here and that obstacle course is a great way to challenge them outside the round pen when there's no fence to help support me or not as much, a lot bigger space. And those obstacles are designed to create some squeezy and worry depending on the horse's exposure and experience level. So we'll probably do at least those two things before I really step on there and try to ride. And again, this just deepens his understanding about confidence in yielding, and it helps our relationship. So we have that strength of bond, building that trust, and that I can control him if he makes me, and he doesn't have to feel bad about if I take control. And then we've just helped get all those things really checked out where we've kind of put him under some pressure and seen how does he handle it. Okay, now time to be a bad, bad horse trainer. You're so bad, Jake Bearbaum. We're gonna look at how do we tie a horse's head around. This is something that's gonna get or can get a lot of crap from people that aren't as educated as they could be of all the ways we can help a horse. And trust me, when you've handled the nastiest of the nasties like I have, Things like this can really not work us too hard, help them find a more honest, true release. Same idea of using a patience pole um, or using a saddle horse to dally off on the horn. It's the same thing. It's honest and true. They have to put the slack in the rope. Now, you saw us prep for this by doing the rope behind the butt, the rope behind the candle, and the rope behind the horn. That makes sure they know how to get themselves moving in a way and following their nose. That way they have a shot of not hitting that pressure super hard and getting scared. We know how to get their feet moving and go somewhere. They have an out. What we're going to do is we're going to go behind the cannel, come back around, and we'll do a clove hitch to the horn. We're going to start where it's just long enough or short enough, that sweet spot where he can't tuck his chin, get slack at his nose to the other side. That's dangerous. Then they can really get stuck. So you do need to have it short enough. Again, disclaimer, this is for trainers and professionals. Find somebody if you feel like your horse needs help with this to give you that help. Don't go trying this without a lot of prep 
and with somebody not there for you, okay? We go too short, they don't ever get any release. That's equally bad. So we're gonna find that sweet spot. And again, someone trained me to do this, help show me, coach me through it as a way to handle and give horses a really honest release and build them up to being able to do this, okay? We'll go behind that kennel. We want him to come over here with his nose. That's going to be a good length right there. So now it's hooked under this lip, having the Cheyenne roll on my saddle. It's an important part of uh, this being a great functional saddle. We'll take the tail, put it under, lay it on there. Take the tail, put it under, lay it on there. That's a clove hitch. Okay. So now, if I can push down on this and the horse tucks their nose, that's how I know we're in a good spot. And he's already shown us that he's probably had some things like this in the past, and he understands how to follow his nose. I just want to ease my in way into revving it up. This is a great thing that if somebody goes to bend him and jams on the gas pedal, I'm going to shush the flag or use a stick and a string to kind of spank his butt, say, go somewhere and figure it out that he might feel trapped and want to go up in the air. And that keeps me out and away. Again, I used to use this only for really extreme cases and realize it's a great skill for most horses to learn and experience. Keeps us safer and them smarter. We're just gonna stand back. And at first, the biggest thing is stand still, relaxed. Okay, so he got himself, oh, he tried to connect. You see, he's looking for the human. But then he gives his nose and neck and yields, finds that standstill. There you can see some of that suck back. This is that part that can, when they start sucking back and we jam on the gas, that's when we get a lot of up and down. Again, he's trying to put his head down and make that rope get slack, and he's getting that relief. The fact that he can do that and find the stand so very quick tells me we're going to go to the shishi. So you guys are going to stay by me. I'm going to step back here. When I step back here, that opens all this round pen up so he has somewhere to go. And there it is. So we've got our first little glimpses of, I'm stuck. I don't know what to do. His neck got straight. The rope is long enough. And he went hop, hop, straight up in the air. Now he's sucking back a little bit. This is what we need to see so we can read him. He was telling us, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. That's when that behavior comes out. Okay. Where we're going to go and what needs to happen, he needs to learn how to bend and take his left hind to his right front leg and step across. When he steps out and away, see how my chin got closer? He can give himself and step forward with this. That'll be the move that'll make that rearing stop. And that's gonna be a big part to help keep us safe when we're riding. If I can bend and put my inside leg on and step onto the outside laterally, big part of why we did all that head down sideways, this opens up the shoulders, gives them somewhere to go so they quit doing hop. Okay, now I'm going to step in and I have to give enough pressure to get him to find that forward a little bit. We might have to shorten the rope so we can't get too tight here, which helps him rear. We're going to ease our way into all these things because he's not being resistant. He just is nervous and doesn't know. And to me, this is a very honest horse about those things. And so we want to listen to him. That helps build that relationship with us.
You can see him drifting sideways. Right there's the move. There's the move. There was the move. There was a great moment where you could see the shoulders go over. He got the release and he's standing still, relaxed with slack in that row, being bent. Okay, and if he moves his nose and he feels a little pressure, he's just following it. This is the start. Okay. Simple little exercise that can really have a bad rap because people really can use it in a wrong way and not for the horse. And I get it. But this is a great thing that can really help this horse and keep me and him safe. So we're going to sign off here. This is where I would quit. He's doing a great job. I'm going to go over there, rub on him. <clears throat> Put them up, give them a nice rinse, and we'll continue with adding in the obstacles and hopefully some first rides the next time. All right, if you're enjoying what we're doing, making sure you're hitting that like button. If you wanna get subscribed, click here. If you wanna see another video, click over here. See you next time.